Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, and today uh, we are doing the second episode of uh, Meraki MX Security, uh, which is a follow-on from our first episode on SD-WAN and Network Assurance. Um, and normally when I watch Netflix and I skip to the next episode, uh, it gives you a recap, like previously on Homeland or something like that. So we'll try and do the same thing. Um, so last time we discussed SD-WAN and Network Assurance. SD-WAN being the ability for us to be um, connectivity agnostic or making use of multiple lines um, of connectivity on our network uh, to balance traffic uh, and keep the costs low. And then Network Assurance, Dimitri showed us how to look at performance of applications um, across our network um, and then also to have a look at our WAN health. And today we're going to be looking at our security portfolio at Meraki and hopefully Dimitri will issue us with one of those stunning demos and enlightening us to the world of SD-WAN and security combined for any network uh, that you may want to deploy it to. So Dimitri, welcome once again and thanks for joining me. Oh, you look excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited <laughs> because uh, uh, I've, I've been reading this, this report about SD-WAN and there are a lot of players out there, don't get me wrong, I think there's more than 40 SD-WAN vendors. Uh, so quite a lot to choose from. Yep. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, most of them are not really security companies, right? So we talked in the last episode about uh, using the internet as a transport, uh, deploying uh, you know cheaper internet lines to the branch and then using them. So that provides extra flexibility, cost savings, etc. Um, but that uh, exposes your organizations to different threats. Yep. And you need, of course, you need to buy firewalls to manage all those local breakouts. Uh, now, if your SD1 solution doesn't have uh, advanced security features built into it, you'll then have to go and buy firewalls from a different vendor. And this is where complexity peaks because you need to drive all solutions from different platforms. You have to also have those skill sets uh, available in within your team. Okay, so we have. Uh just to recap, we have SD-WAN players out there. They are mainly focused on SD-WAN and we have to, in a normal use case, combine that with a firewall as well. Extra cost, extra complexity, more skill sets required within a business and effectively more cost at the end of the day. Yes, yes. I mean, and this is where um, I think we can solve this problem with our MX range, right? Because um, at the core, MX is a UTM, or I would say it's a next generation firewall. Okay. So the MX64 uh, that Dimitri picked up is probably one of our most popular units, uh, probably what, 50 clients uh, that you can host on this. Um, very powerful, runs SD-WAN and security. And really what we want to get into is the security products that um, Meraki hits um, very well. And uh, I've heard some acronyms being thrown around, IDS, IPS, AMP. Um, tell us a bit more about that, will you, Dimitri? Uh, so uh, that's the next generation firewall piece uh, of that. So uh, the intrusion prevention engine looks at uh, traffic patterns and um, if it sees any malicious activity, it will um, terminate it. So before attacks okay. can uh, take place. Of course, an admin can also be uh, notified. So if that means I get onto my PC, I'm sitting in the network, I access a website, um, externally, mm. out of my organization, the MX will then have the sense or knowledge or say uh, the ability, should that uh, connection be threatening to my network, it will cut it off. Yes, exactly. So if, uh, if any of your applications are being used by attackers um, as an uh, attack vector, yeah. we then will be able to understand that. Uh, and um, take action before uh, things uh, degrade. I've heard something called Talos, mm. the Talos team from Cisco. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the research group that's behind everything. So this is the biggest uh, research group uh, a security vendor has okay. uh, at the moment, and we uh, tap into them. So we're well equipped, then, shall we say? Yes, we go for the we go for the best with the most important uh, <laughs> important aspects. Right? Uh, I heard a saying once: they will get in no matter what. It's just your ability to make sure either you notice it or block as much as you can of it. So, 
is that true in um, our world as well that you know sometimes something does slip through and do we have say secondary protocols that will help us um, in determining whether something has been entered it's threatening in my network and I need to remove it mm, that, that's actually a good point I mean I'm, I'm a technical person so I can't stay here stay here and lie and say hey, everything is, is fault proof this is where we have what we call defense in depth okay so this is where you'd have your firewall at the perimeter you might have maybe an umbrella integration on your access points uh, you might have an you know amp for endpoints or umbrella for endpoints as well um, and you just need to make sure that if something breaches the initial wall it will then get stopped on the secondary end Interesting point you make about um, additional security products that are available end to end. Um, <clears throat> can you confirm that you know in in Meraki and Cisco we have the ability to provide a customer with end to end security, both from perimeter to device. Um, and in your mind, from a technical perspective, we always have these lovely marketing emails mm -hmm. that go out. How easy integration happens? Is it easy? I. I yeah, I mentioned the integration with Umbrella we have on our access point and you know, it took me probably five minutes without any documentation to do it at home. Okay, I'm a technical guy, I'm probably used with the Meraki and Umbrella dashboards um, and just finding the link was quite easy. But uh, I think we should definitely revisit that in the next video and then show so. the guys how, how easy it is to both secure and content filter your SSIDs. We love a bit of simplicity and I think we do that well. So, Dimitri, would you be so kind either to elaborate a bit further on our conversation or is it time for a demo? Uh, well, we talked about the IPS, um, but we didn't talk about AMP. So, okay. Advanced Malware Protection is another uh, service we uh, look at uh, the bigger Cisco group to provide. Uh, so, this is where we scan in real time all the files that are crossing the NX. Uh, we take a fingerprint of the file and we send it to the AMP cloud and the AMP cloud tell us, hey, we've seen this file, it's good, we let it pass, uh, we've seen this file, it's malicious, we block it and generate an alarm, or we haven't seen this file at all. So there's a registry? Yes. Okay, and is that registry quite wide in its scope, the signatures that it, it, um, it scans, and is there a good suppository, a good history, so that you know customers can feel confident that AMP mm. is definitely a product that's going to give them the, the security that they need? Yes, I mean, the database behind it is uh, extensive uh, and there's a lot of research out there comparing AMP with other security features. Okay. So um, we will compare vendors uh, between themselves. So uh, for those of you who are into security, I'll definitely um, hope you can check and see how Cisco Sourcefire uh, or Cisco AMP, how they actually do compare to other, other vendors. Excellent. So, so content filtering. That's well, always one that's forgotten. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting because it, when people, when I, I talk to people about content filtering, it's always about making sure, you know, people follow company guidelines when it comes to uh, the type of websites they can browse at work. What people forget is the security aspect of everything because um, if you get, you know, an email from the bank saying, hey, please click on this uh, website, we have some issues with your username and password, can you please supply them to us. Right? <laughs> I mean, if you click on that link, that link is definitely spoofed. It looks real. It is real, right? It's, it's not something that the IPS engine will do something. It's not, it's not an attack. It's not a file that you download, right? It's, um, it's a social type of exploitation. Okay. Um, so this is where uh, BrightCloud, so this is the company behind content filtering, will then uh, look and say, well, actually, that's not a, a good website we're looking at. It's a, a spoof and malicious website and it will again block that and show you a splash page. Awesome. So what's next? I think it's time to show you how easy it is to configure these things. Brilliant. So uh, let's get on to that. So just a bit of a recap. Um, SD-WAN, network assurance and security all in one place uh, with Meraki um, and uh, obviously a host of products that fit into that central dashboard uh, so that you can secure your network, you can lower your costs on connectivity, and you can keep an eye on your ISPs and your applications. So really interesting um, from that perspective, but I think security is, is one place that is normally neglected, 
um, and it is uh, sometimes a cause of, of big concern when networks go down uh, as to where the security breaches are. And let's see what uh, Dimitri has got, us, got to show us uh, in his demo. So I'm quickly going to jump in our own uh, corporate network here in Meraki okay. and show you how uh, easy it is to configure all these elements. So I'm going to first of all go in the correct network in our London office. Uh, I'm going to click on security in SD1 and jump into threat protection. That's this, easy. It's now network intuitive, right? The Meraki dashboard is actually asking you what you want to do, right? In this case, we will start with both of these elements disabled and we're gonna then say yes we want uh, advanced malware protection enabled so we want to scan the files that cross the mx and make sure we um, we kill the transfer of the malicious files into our network we then have uh, a thread grid option here so thread grid is a sandboxing environment that cisco offers so for all those unknown files we discussed uh, previously, yep. if you as an organization cannot take the risk of having those files being downloaded, we will automatically send a copy of it through the thread grid backend, mm -hmm. whatever that's uh, in the cloud or uh, sitting on premise in one of your data centers. And thread grid is then is gonna analyze it for about 10 minutes. Almost watching a movie trailer to decide whether it's worth watching in the first place or not. You, yes. get, you get a little you get a little sample of the file and uh, yes. you detonate it, see if it's if it's malicious or not, and if it's not, yes. off it goes. Yes, it's, it, it provides you with a bit more reassurance, right? And the nice stuff about ThreadGrid is not only it computes a score, so you know if the file is uh, you know malicious or good, but it automatically updates the entire AMP database. So you yourself might not have ThreadGrid, but somewhere else around the world, the same file that is crossing your MX is being scanned by a different customer. Well, everybody else is going to benefit from that. So it's a very smart way of doing security by then utilizing the existing infrastructure out there in the field and scanning all those unknown files. Okay, great. So community of networks scanning exist or new files running through thread grid and you benefit from that as well even though you don't have thread grid yes <laughs> that's brilliant and of course uh, the intrusion detection and prevention uh, we of course going to put it on prevention because we're not just interested in the alarming we are interested in cutting cutting off the malicious traffic and then we have these three rule sets so this specifies uh, how big should the database be so this database of signatures how uh, how big is that? How many years back this spans? So this is something that's coming directly from, from Cisco SourceFire. Okay. Uh, now, the content filtering has a different tab here. We have about 80 plus categories. Um, the last time I checked, Bright Cloud had 23 billion URLs, uh, and they constantly work at classifying any new websites that come up, right? Okay. So from here, if I look at spam or dangerous websites, you'll see that then I can say spam URLs, confirm spam sources. So now anybody behind this MX trying to go on a website that matches that category will not access it. Instead, it will get a splash page saying, sorry, you have been blocked because this website is a spam URL. Awesome. So if you have a security team that's interested to diagnose uh, any issues yep. and get further information on uh, how the security elements are operating, uh, we created uh, what we call the security center. Okay. The nice part about the security center is that um, you start with a high level view across your whole organization. So us as Meraki, we have uh, 50 sites around the world uh, most of them are secured with an MX UTM. Yeah. Um, now we can get the data and we can understand what the whole Meraki organization is, is doing. So what are the most affected networks, what are the most prevalent threats, and most attacked users, right? So um, what I can do is that I can, for example, single out the site, click show this network only, and this will pivot on that uh, particular element so we can okay. understand uh, a bit more. Now, as you can see here, this is a high-level view of what's going on. We can, of course, 
try to understand the events as they happen on a timeline basis. Okay. So we know exactly who's attacking what. And then when we click on uh, each of the attacks, we get relevant links. So we can check them for additional information. And we can, of course, whitelist it. So in case you have a false positive, this is telling the box, hey, don't stop this type of traffic. We still log it, but uh, we then allow it to, uh, to pass. I'm used to the, um, <laughs> the, the firewall that's on a Windows um, platform that keeps telling you to update it um, and that there's a million threats on it. Um, but seeing uh, the Meraki MX or this level of detail actually gives you a bit more of an understanding as to what lies behind all of that. It's, it's actually an interesting point uh, that you're making. It's, uh, and I forgot to mention that when I was uh, showing you how easy it is to configure. Uh, as an admin, you don't actually need to go back and update anything. All the databases are kept up to date for you. So there is no, uh, you know, there's no maintenance okay. when it comes to the, the security aspects, right? Uh, we also discussed about the, the malware that sometimes you do get a zero day malware that crosses mm -hmm. uh, your MX. Uh, it's, um, it's a fact of life. It's not, it will always happen. Um, what we can do is that we can take a step forward and we can account for that malware that is running in your network. So this is where the retrospective malware detection comes in, right? So these are files that have crossed the network at a particular point. Um, they were unknown at the time but now we know that are, they are malicious. Okay. Right, so you as an admin can use the same portal to then pivot on the element and you can say, well, I want to show who downloaded this file, right? So this will tell me that this file has been downloaded in Finsbury by this particular client, right? So at this point, I can then click view client details and that brings me to the client page. Great demo. Very insightful. I think um, most interesting part is how far you can drill down um, really to the specific site and then look at most prevalent threats, uh, look at which devices um, are affected, but also um, the elements that pop out are the ones that are most relevant to me. So Meraki has done a really good job, it seems, to, um, in the dashboard, present material that is relevant uh, to the customer. Um, and to your network. Anything else you want to add on that? Thanks very much. That was it was really no, my, my, definitely my sharpened my uh, demos up. My uh, my my pleasure. And it's um, it's quite important that I think everybody can push a lot of information for the end users. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's very important to make it relevant, right? Especially when it comes to security uh, or network performance. Uh, it's uh, nice to know that hey, I, this is where I need to be focusing rather than. Well, wait a minute, there's loads of information, but you know, I, I can get lost in all that data. Yeah, enough of um, networks being a burden or being complex. I think um, from what I hear from customers in general is, you know, Nick, it's, it's simple, it's great, it works. Um, yes, we would maybe like this little feature there, but, you know, these things are an aggregate of multiple requests from customers who say, we would like to see that, and we end up releasing it in any way. Um, to give them a, a different visual perspective on the dashboard. Um, but so far, we've had nothing but good reviews. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know more about um, Meraki MX, um, Gardner has a great site called uh, Peer Insights, uh, where customers comment on the products. There's Meraki Community, uh, which is another area where users of Meraki equipment go and post uh, particular problems that they would like to solve with the product and how to do that. Um, and there's a lot of input from both Meraki engineers, product owners, as well as um, customers who use our products. And then there's uh, us in the comment field. So mm. if you have any further questions or you want to make a comment, you maybe want to comment on why I've gone and shaved all my hair off, um, then, you know, please do that. Uh, but until next time, Dimitri, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate you. it. See you later, guys. <laughs> See you later.